Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this cube text effect. Uh, it's sort of like a melted cube um, abstract effect, I don't know really what to call it. But this is it right here, you can see multicolored, looks pretty sweet. Uh, I didn't get to play around with it as much in Photoshop. But I figured you guys would be able to do that yourselves. Um, so I'm going to be showing you the Cinema 4D part, obviously, and then some Photoshop to get this effect. So let's just jump right into it. Here is the uh, text in Cinema 4D. You can see it's pretty simple. Uh, there's not much to it. So let me put all this in a group, and I'll hide it. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and grab Mo Text. So Mo Graph Mo Text. Just want to put in your text so i did fireworks but without any vowels um, i'm gonna center this align center depth 75 this is just like my standard setup caps fillet cap fillet cap although this won't matter too much i'm gonna set it to one radius each um, there we go and let's pick a font i'm gonna go with uh elemental something something uh, this will take a minute to load all right, there we go. Let me find elemental. There we go. Ele uh, elemental end is what it's called. Um, we want regular, not italic. And that's the font I used. You guys can go ahead and use whatever font you like. And we're going to duplicate this. Just Command C, Command V. Hide one of those. And then on the one that you have visible, you, you want to right click, select children, C. Right click. Actually, you didn't need to select children, but right click, select children see again uh, let's open this up go to the folder with your text or if you have two words you want to select the folder with both of those words uh, let's do select children again see right click connect objects and delete that should work I think I might have done a couple extra select children's but I always do that to be safe um, so now we have just this object of our text like so uh, <clears throat> By the way, when you are in those group folders too, you can rotate your letters if you want some rotation. This effect looks better with them straight on, but it's up to you guys if you want to do something like that. Um, then you want to go ahead to your objects and get a cube, and you want to make all the sizes 10. So 10, 10, 10, X, Y, and Z. And then go ahead to where are we going? Oh no, we're going MoGraph and Cloner. And we want to add the cube to the cloner, select the cloner. Uh, mode you want object and the where is it where it says object you can just go to the right click the arrow and click the object of our text so the one that's visible and <clears throat> you can see we have those cubes pop up now but we kind of have to make them look good I guess and so we want to go to uh, distrib dis distribution and for that you want to select uh, volume you want to keep it at random. Seed doesn't really matter, but count you want to put to a thousand. And you want to go to where your object is. So mine says fireworks here. And you want to double click at these two dots and you will notice your text will disappear and now you have some cubes. Okay, after that you want to go ahead and create a material. I already have my materials down here, but I'll show you quickly how to make them. Um, so you, you can just double click and that will create a new material. You can double click on that to edit it and you just want to pick a color. So I'll just pick red. You can put the saturation all the way up as well. Uh, it doesn't matter because in Photoshop you can always change it. Reflectance then, uh, you want to select that. It's already checked for me, but we want to go ahead to add and we want to do reflection legacy. And then color, we want to go to texture. Keep that at 100. Texture. Um, and where is it at Fresnel and there we go we can if we want we can bump that down here so at layer one we can bump that down if it's too much but I'm gonna keep it pretty high for now because I believe that's what I did before and then you just want to duplicate that a couple times just copy and paste control C control V and pick four colors or three or however many colors you want that kind of complement each other pretty well so you can see I'm going to use the colors I had before and I'm just going to drag one to this cloner. Then let's duplicate it, control C, control V. And 
Uh, if you go down to the seed, you just want to put in another random seed. So I'll just put in four for that one. And let's change the color to blue. Let's duplicate this again and we'll do the same thing. Uh, let's change color first. We'll go purple and seed will do seven. That works. And then oh, let me duplicate it first. Add the fourth color and we'll do another seed. We'll do 10. There we go. There's our text setup. That looks pretty nice. Uh, but we want to add some more spice in this. So we want to go ahead, select all the cloners, go to MoGraph Effector Random. You know, it's still kind of burst out. You could also use this as an effect if you want. Uh, change the scale and rotation or something. But what we want to do is go to Fall Off, and we want to go to Sphere. And I didn't mess with any of the settings. You can feel free to mess with settings to get different looks. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and place this somewhere. So maybe up here to the top left So we have kind of some cubes explodes exploding off the F uh, One thing you want to be careful of of is if you do it too close to the center like something like that It might be difficult to make out the letters. So you don't want to do that. You just want like a piece of it so there's a small explosion going on and uh, You want to do that four times five times six times however many you want and put that throughout the text uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and speed it up for you guys. Alright, once you have uh, everything set up how you want it, you want to go back to the text that you have hidden here. So if I check this, you kind of have this pop up. And we want to go to Array, Atom Array, and drag that there. And then we want to set this to either 1 or 0.5 or some somewhere in that range at, for sphere radius. And it will make the cylinder radius the same as well. Um, and then you just want to pick one of the colors you used. So I'm going to go ahead and use the blue. And then if you're using my Cinema 4D Lightroom, all you need to do is go to your render settings, pick a destination, render it out. If you're using your Lightroom or whatever Lightroom, you can just go ahead and figure out your render settings, render it out. Uh, if you want my Lightroom, I'll link it in the description, but let's hop over into Photoshop now. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. This is what we're going to try to recreate, obviously. So I'm going to hide that for now. I'm going to go ahead and get the render I did previously. Um, this is just in a Twitter header document. Um, you can be obviously in any document you want. I'm going to expand the size a little bit, hit enter, and here we go. Here's the text. So I'm going to first right click rasterize, command J duplicate. Filter, Stylize, Find Edges, Command I to Inverse, Layer Style, Linear Dodge, and then we just want to bring down the opacity of that pretty far. 25 might be enough, but I'll go a little lower just to be safe. Yeah, we'll go 20, that works. <clears throat> and then let's just go ahead and add a small color correction, I guess you could say. I'm just going to go ahead to Levels and just give it just darken it up and make it look a bit nicer so right here this is going to be three and then uh the end one at 255 is going to be 227 and that'll just kind of make things look a little nicer for now i'm not going to put a proper color correction on this you guys can obviously go ahead and do that yourselves um, below that i'm going to create a new layer and get a brush let me zoom out here how big is this brush do i have caps okay I'm gonna bump this size up about a thousand just so I can go below it. And I'm gonna click, go across, and actually I want black, so I'm gonna hit I and inverse it. Set it to overlay. And then we wanna set the opacity to 25. Enter. Hit, uh, do Command J, Command I, that inverses it and makes it white now. And then we wanna do Command T, right click, flip vertical, and then actually, bring up the transform and bring it to the very top like that. So now throughout the whole document you have a black to a white. You could just do a black to white gradient too if you want, but I don't like the middle overlap mixture. And you can also, if you'd like, set this as a clipping mask, but I like it the whole document, so that's how I'm gonna do it, but you can obviously do it your way uh, if you feel like it. Uh, let's go ahead down there, down and get a solid color and my thing's gonna pop up over here. We wanna do a blue, 
And if you guys know me, I've been doing this a lot in my recent tutorials, but the color is 4223A5. Uh, okay, and we want to set that to lighten. And this is like a dark purple, actually. It's not really a blue. But we want to set that to lighten 25% opacity. Um, I chose purple because purple is one of my colors. I didn't have uh, like any dark blue, and I, dark blue just didn't look right. Purple kind of fit the color scheme a little nicer. <clears throat> and then, uh, <clears throat> sorry. And then you want to go to your text layer. In this case, the find edges layer. Create a new layer above that. And now we want to start adding some glow to um, some of these areas. So let's get a soft brush. We'll make it smaller. And you just want to pick the colors you used um, for cubes. So let me just pick this pink. And I'm going to go ahead and click around in some places. Uh, you'll probably be better off if you click where there's like chunks of that color so I'm looking for chunks of pink to kind of put this so that's pretty good and you just want to cycle through all the colors and to save time I'll fast forward this a little bit all right there we go and then we can just set that to screen and maybe like 30 percent opacity uh, you could play with that if you want it a little higher you want like a bigger glow or something like that uh, but I'm gonna leave it at you know I want it at 30 enter <laughs> All right, and then finally, we want to go to the main text. So in this case, it's like the bottommost layer. Let's duplicate that. And I'm going to bring mine above the find edges layer. So you can see, um, you can no longer see the find edges. And then we're going to use this action, which I got from Spoon Graphics website. A uh, link will be in the description down below. Um, and this action is called pixel sorting effect. And it's really sweet. So we want to go ahead to uh, where it says hard result and we're gonna do apply highlights midtones and apply to shadows so I'm gonna select apply to highlights and I'm just gonna click the play button and now it'll do this action and then when it's done you have something like that boom cool um, select the layer again I actually don't know what layer you have to have selected for this effect but I always just select this duplicated layer um, just in case, but let's go to the midtones, press play again. Okay, and then select the, uh, that layer once more, and then apply to shadows. And you can play around with some of the other actions in there if you'd want. Um, these, I thought these three looked the best, and the other ones took a lot longer as well. But you, then you can just mess with the placement of these. So the first one is usually placed pretty well. And then I found the second and third ones you kind of had to adjust. Actually, maybe it's just the third one. Um, so just, I'm going to bring this up. Um, let's keep like it's kind of melting down. You could actually bring it up the other way, have it melting up. But actually, let's just keep it where it was. I think that looks all right. There we go. That's pretty, pretty cool looking. Uh, I think I like that. And then the last sort of thing I did on the text part is add a sort of plexus to the random effector spots. Um, I don't remember if I did this below or above the text, but we're going to create a layer below the text, right above the background. Let's go ahead to the brush. Let's get white. And this is from some random brush pack. I'm not actually sure which one. Uh, in my last tutorial, I included a download to a brush pack, so if, if you had that, it's from that. But I'll put that download link in the description again for you guys. But um, it's at the bottom for me. You guys might have to look through it because I included all these brushes in that pack. Uh, but here you go. You have some various plexus-looking um, brushes. And you just want to pick out one of those. So I'll pick this one. And you just want to try to match it up with some of the random effector. So maybe one like this. That would look good. All right. Uh, maybe use the same one, line it up over here. I don't know. And then you can change over to another one, try to line it up with something else. Maybe grab this guy. Use the bracket tools to change the size. Uh, something like that. Cool. And maybe like that. You can also rotate these brushes if you go here and you can rotate them different directions. Um, but that, yeah, that's basically all I did for that. And you can bump down the opacity if it's a little too much. You can put it on top as well, uh, but I didn't like that. Yeah, I definitely had it below. And just bump down the opacity a little bit. And that was basically the text effect. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I did add a little to the background in the this one that you saw before. 
But th those were just a couple stocks from the brush pack that I had and then duplicated the render behind, you know. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this effect. Hopefully you can find a cool way to use this in a project or something. Uh, if you did enjoy, please leave a like. Uh, at a 50 likes, I'll put the Cinema 4D file and the Photoshop file in the description for you guys to download and use yourself. Um, but other than that, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy, add my Snapchat, which is Quezzy, and follow my Instagram, which is fairly new, which is That's Quezzy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.